folks, Saturday night, welcome aboard Murder Hobo Inc., the one-shot edition. Thanks for joining us. I think you are in for a treat this evening. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like uh, Murder Hobo Conch or a phone case or a duvet cover, or, I don't know, maybe even a toilet seat cover. I'm not sure. We sell a lot <laughs> of crap. Uh, check out the link below. Uh, most importantly, if you want to be on a one shot or on the talk show on Tuesdays, this Tuesday, Iron DM, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, hit us up and we will get you on here. Uh, Andrew's been here a couple of times. Sam's been here number two. That means next time, swag city for him. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for dice that don't suck. Uh, so if you're looking at, for, if you're in the market for some custom dice, hit up uh, at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Tell them what you want. See if they got time to go ahead and do it. And if your game stinks, unlike ours, because ours smells like success, try a little adventure sense in your game from oddfishgames.com. They come in 60 different scents, not including the special holiday edition. If you missed this past Between the Rolls, we had Jen on from Odd Fish Games, creator of How to RPG with Your Cat. The Let's see, it had eight days to go on Tuesday, so I think it's got another day or two. Uh, they have funded themselves over 300%, but that shouldn't stop you from doing it. Uh, I got to play uh, once, had a great time. I have funded it. I put my money where my mouth is. So that's at oddfishgames.com. Uh, they also make the shine system if you want to write gooder than me. So check that out. Uh, folks, tonight's episode is called The Crying Jester. Uh, for you long haulers, you may remember this from the Trevor Project opportunity we did a couple of years ago. Hence, only two PCs. Uh, we will get to the particulars here in just a second. First, let's introduce you to the players who are going to... Make you laugh, cry, or shake your head, or all of the above. We'll start with Andrew, because he's on top here on my screen. Andrew, who are you? Who are you playing tonight? Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Yawetag, Y-A-W-E-T-A-G. Tonight, I'm going to be playing a Heron Gun Wild Magic Barbarian. Uh, that's right, a bunny barbarian. Her name is Patricia Rabbit. She was bunnery sergeant at the Battle of Watership Down. It's time for some fun. Oh. Wow. Uh, hey, Sam, top that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a dwarven rogue named Simon Tumblegut, who's just a pudgy little dwarvish looking version of Eggman. That's about it. I don't know. A rogue in a city Simon. adventure? Wow. Uh, this could go south uh, quickly. And Andrew's bunny is a wild magic individual, so we might be seeing that. Folks, this is called the Crying Jester. Uh, we rolled a couple of things out before in Green Room, and it turns out that Patricia has been uh, the recipient of an inheritance, it being a block-long structure in the city of Cathaway uh, that was a large-scale inn with a lot of businesses below, so... If you're building something in your town with apartments on top and structures below, that's what you're playing. Uh, these guys are going to go ahead and check out the uh, property and see what it is. They've already spoken with several people who have told them that it's haunted. It was the scene of a murder. Uh, there's gruesome tales, yada, yada, yada. Uh, these guys have arrived. Uh, in their prior exploits, they have either magic armor or magic weapon. Uh, each has two potions of healing, and Patricia, by die roll, is the recipient of a strange potion with multiple colors. Uh, going to be one of those nights with the dogs tonight. <laughs> um, they heard Bunny. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to hear oh, something. Uh, so as you guys get directions from Barrister Benton Reed, uh, you find yourselves in front of the old crying jester. Now, uh, upon first view, you notice that it needs a lot of paint, some shingles, and probably a variety of other repairs. The windows are boarded up, and the doors uh, are boarded up with X's on them. Uh, a lot of cobblestones around the building are in good shape, but some need to be replaced. Overall, the structure appears sound since we have a dwarf here. 
Uh, you also notice that this is an opportunity. Uh, your last foray out into the wild didn't go so well. Uh, living in the urban environment is clearly safer. I mean, come on, right? Uh, but if you handle this correctly, uh, you can make quite a bit of coin here. So uh, the picture that was posted out on Twitter is the same picture that these guys have. Uh, as you stand in front of the structure, again, it encompasses an entire city block, but you notice an entrance over there and an entrance over there. Gentlemen or lady, how would you guys like to proceed? It's pretty nice. Better than barracks. I just need a few screen doors. We'll be good. Yeah, some windows. I guess proceed in the main entrance, whatever it looks that way. I don't know if anyone looks particular or they look the same. Uh, you feel that the main entrance is the one on the right. Yeah. Let's go. I've got the key. As you guys go over there, uh, give me a perception check, please. Yeah. 17. Uh, is it yeah it's timon right timon timon uh timon uh you're focused on the door uh however patricia you notice that uh some of your new neighbors are watching you from the windows and doors uh but as you look at them they just kind of shrink back into the darkness uh apparently you guys are going in solos uh as you get to the door uh d12 against me time on six eight eh, you're gonna have to put your uh strength into it so give me a strength check to get the x off the door you got scrawny arms man 11 oh yeah you get that thing off there you you pop it off you do not cut yourself with a nail and sustain tetanus, which is a nice thing. Uh, you get both doors, uh, you get both boards off uh, and with a big sigh, you open it up. Uh, in front of you is a cobblestone courtyard, uh, which doesn't seem quite right, but as the door opens, you notice that it opens wider than just a normal door. Uh, this place smells of old horse dung and leather. Uh, the ceiling, yeah, the ceiling itself is open in a big square. Uh, so there's uh, uh, standing water in the center of the cobblestones, causing a dip. Uh, you notice that there are several sheltered stalls, rooftop stalls on two walls. Each of these stalls appears to be wide enough to hold a pair of horses. Uh, horseshoes hang on the stall supports, but on the northern wall, there is an unusual mural just under the overhang, so it has not been destroyed by the weather. A seven-headed serpent is carved into the wall of this room, and the scales are still covered in some gold leaf. Uh, despite the age, it is in great shape, a small room around the corner uh, is also present. So as you look at this thing, uh, you go in, big open courtyard, stalls, stalls. There's a room directly to your right. There's a door directly ahead of you, uh, about 60 feet. And if you go a little bit further, you'll notice there's a hallway to the left. So this is... Uh, essentially, it's an open garage. Think of it as a Roman villa with the opening, uh, stinks, uh, and uh, squalid water. But plenty of places to look. I think I'm kind of interested in looking at that mural piece real quick. Mm -hmm. So as you wander in uh, to look at the mural a little bit more closely, you notice directly to your right is a room. Then there are stalls to the right. There are stalls to the left. There's the door directly in front of you. There's two doors, high left. And then there's a hallway, straight left. So west, three doors north, stalls, and a room behind you. Uh, give me an arcana check. Uh, 
for looking at the mural. 19. Yeah, you've seen this before uh, in your travels. Uh, this is uh, the goddess Tachesis, uh, an evil kind of woman, if you want to call her that. Uh, she is draconian in nature. Each of the heads probably were painted different colors uh, because of your familiarity with this. Uh, but you, I mean, while she is slightly evil, she's not completely evil. Uh, and she's also known for the goddess of speed. So as you're starting to look around, you guys don't need to roll insight, but you kind of figure out that this is the garage. Uh, this is the barn. Uh, and give me a perception check, both of you. 10. Dirty 20. Uh, as you're looking around, you inform Patricia of your findings. Just over Patricia's head, you can kind of see into that room, and uh, it looks like there's some chariots in there. <laughs> so that, that would be maybe a, a workshop, possibly. Uh, as you count, Patricia, as you count, you can tell that there were probably room for about 16 mounts and several conveyances in here. Uh, but right now, there's... Uh, the small room has two damaged chariots in there. Just retire and do horse races. Not, would not be bad. Uh, taxi service in town. I have no idea how big the area is. As you continue <laughs> to look around, you notice the door, the two doors, the long hallway, and perception check. <coughs> 16. 18. Uh, both of you hear something in the chariot room, like something falling off a shelf. To check it out. Yeah, I can quietly go up there and as you as you walk and hop on over there, I will take an investigation check from both of you. Three. That's a sixteen. Patricia. That is a fine chariot, and if you can find a wheel, you can make that useful again. Uh, Timon, uh, you see feet. <laughs> like human feet? <laughs> like goblin feet. Everybody roll initiative. That's what I came for. Oh, that's not what I came for. Uh, yeah, 13. I got a 10. I got a 2. Hey. Uh, Timon, we will start with you. Do I see it as a goblin or do I still just see the feet? You see six pairs of feet. Oh. Or I'm sorry, three. I'm sorry, three pairs of feet. Okay. Uh, yeah, three well, pairs of feet. Pull out my hand crossbow and just lovely shout. Who the hell's there? Uh, one goblin comes from around the corner of the chariot, another one comes from the other side, and there's still two feet on the blind side of the chariot. They have anything out or? Scimitars, they're coming at you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Briark, Briark. I'll go ahead and uh, fire twice, I guess. I think I can do that. For all you old schoolers, Briark is goblin for I surrender. Trust us. Sure. That's uh, 16 to hit. Easily? Oh, not easily, but yes, you hit. Uh, that is nine points of damage. Ooh, uh, he be no more uh, with a pair of bolts in his body. Patricia, you see one goblin crumple to the ground. Uh, the other one is charging right for you, yelling, Briark, Briark, Briark. My turn. Yep. Of course, I'm going to run up and try to smack <laughs> one with a carrot crusher. Sure. Uh, that's like 20 something to hit. I can't even add that high. Yep. And I'm sure uh, 17 points will down him. Uh, that will down him. Uh, as you guys finish off both of your aggressors, 
Uh, you notice that the chariot is careening towards you. Uh, time out, you saw the two feet, so you know the goblin has the yoke, and he's charging towards odd even. <laughs> even. Time out. What is that? Am I pronouncing that right? Time men. Time men. Actually, it's T Y M E N. So. I'm, I'm butchering it. Okay, right. Timon. Uh, the chariot is careening towards you. Give me a dexterity check. Just a check. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's like that's a 19. So that's 23. You leap out of the way just as you see the feet kind of go around to the side. And Patricia, a goblin wearing a chain shirt and shield, carrying a scimitar comes swinging down upon your skull. Oh, nothing. The first one is a 15, and the backhand is at disadvantage. And that ain't going to do anything. So 15 plus 4, 19. Ooh, that will hit. Uh, we'll get a murder hobo dice out. Oh, Thanks. failed me. Four hit points of damage as it slashes into you. Got you by a hair. Ah. Uh, Timon, if you wish to use a missile attack, you may. Uh, you will spend most of your time running up to it if you're going to use standard melee. Uh, I mean, I got the crossbow out already. Might as well shoot at it. Sure. Uh, that's a 20 on the die. Nice. That's good. That's going to do some significant damage. <laughs> Only a two He's on down. the damage die. So that's, uh, well, it's damage, nine, damage, four. modifier. That was a nat 20, right? So you double the, double the die, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's four plus five, so nine again. Eh, he's not amused. Patricia, uh, goblin o rabbit, one on one. You're up. <laughs> you picked the wrong rabbit today. Well, he was I... trying to get to Albuquerque. Oh, well, 24, the hit. <laughs> And oof, nine plus five is another 14 damage. Not good enough. He's hanging on by, wow. a, by a hair. Uh, Briark, Briark, uh, first attack, 14 plus four, 18. Oops. Second attack at disadvantage is four plus four is an eight. Uh, let's switch over to a different murder hobo die. And that's worse. Three hit points of damage to you as your armor is effective. Um, likely the final round, uh, Timon, you're up. Sit the fuck down, you slow. <laughs> <laughs> Try to shoot him again. I, yeah, I should hit again, I think. Is that uh, another 16? He has two hit points. No idea what Briarch means. Probably means kill him or something. Uh, yeah, that's uh, 11 points of damage on that one. Uh, off with his head uh, as the creature's lifeless body falls to the ground. The head rolls the head across the cobblestone. You have hmm. successfully killed three goblins. How they, how they got in the middle of the city is a mystery. What, what would you like to do? They were in the chariot room. They could have been pets. I'd, I would <coughs> try to investigate and see if I find any of them staying here or anything. <coughs> uh, Patricia, what are you doing? I was going to look around for anything of, of importance. Uh, are you checking the room or the bodies, guys? The, uh, I'll check the bodies. Yeah, I'm going to check the room. Yeah, so. Fair enough. Uh, Patricia, you find... Uh, 15 gold pieces and a potion vial. Give me a medicine check. This should work well. 11, oh, nine. Uh, the ink on it's smudged. You can't really tell what it is. Uh, inside the uh, workshop area, <laughs> Timon, you find another uh, chariot in disrepair. However, uh, it appears all the pieces are there. So you can probably put it back together and be fine. You also find 
the body of a human being. Uh, the individual is wearing a guard tabard uh, and seems to have suffered a serious neck wound. He also has a hat on with two bills. So possibly an investigator type. Uh, other than that, you leave this shit behind. <laughs> bodies on the first day. Well, I don't find any evidence of them like hanging out here or living here. Just doing nope. This. Okay. Well, I guess we should look around and see if there's anything else like this around here. Dead bodies. Uh, only the three or only the four dead bodies. Uh, everything else you see some tack uh, some leather equipment a, a lot of workshop equipment basic workshop equipment as a dwarf you'll recognize that you know hammers chisels screwdrivers crap like that search him too, by the, way. Yeah. the guard uh, he's got a long sword is always got and a leather uh, chest piece well I'm gonna take his hat and start wearing it Nice, wearing the dead man's hat. That'd be a nice touch. <clears throat> Where'd you get it? Ah, off the dead guard. Okay, that should impress everybody. Uh, again, this is the stables. Uh, you guys do a thorough search, uh, but you find uh, nothing of irregularity aside from the four victims, three of which you're responsible for. Uh, with that search complete, you have the single door, the two doors for the hallway. I guess the yeah, hallway is like part of this, maybe first, or what do you think? That works. I think we pick a direction and just keep headed that direction until we hit it. <clears throat> All right. So, which direction? Hallway. As you head towards the hallway, you notice an archway uh, with stairs going up. Uh, the hallway continues. With another archway, so it's a double archway. Just inside the second archway is a door, and then a long hallway, and then kind of a an entrance into another room. But it continues on. So the hallway is about fifty feet long. Uh, first, you must cross pat or cross by the stairs going up, or investigate the stairs going up and the door just inside and to the right. I think we should stay down here. Hmm. Clear the downstairs first. I guess we <laughs> look at that room that's open. Yeah, let's go in that well, door. That door, uh, that has a door. So you go through the archway and then the door is right inside the archway. Who wants to open the door? It's my house. I'll open it. Uh, shelves uh, run north to south in this room and a variety of common goods are still on them. Uh, items uh, appear to be used for cleaning, wax candles, torches, and some textiles are present here. So uh, apparently vagrants have not picked this place clean. Uh, for some reason, this room was painted black. That was my cousin's favorite color. I mean, I guess I'll just make a quick investigation to see if I find anything unusual. <clears throat> Sure. Uh, as you walk in, a four swarms of bats. Uh, the room was not painted black. It was covered in bats. Initiative, gentlemen. My goodness. <laughs> Twelve. It's another 13. I think it's what I got last time. I'm uh, sucking hind tilt with an 11. Uh, two swarms on each of you. The bats clearly swarm all over the place, uh, reluctant that you have interrupted their velvet coating. Mm. Uh, Tymon, we'll start with you with your 13. You got two swarms of bats to deal with. Hopefully they are not vampiric in nature. Um, well, I guess <coughs> I should move out of the swarms first. And I guess I'll try shooting at them. Sure. Uh, Patricia, how close to you were you? Oh, well, Because that... <laughs> <laughs> if you were standing in the doorway, I'm going to need dex checks from both of you. Yeah, I was standing in the doorway watching them. Dex checks from both of you. 
Ooh, not good. Nine. 16 for me. Uh, that sturdy dwarf knocks you back. Your first attack, Patricia, will be at disadvantage <laughs> as you struggle off your butt. Uh, Get these back. <clears throat> Time it well no, it's from Timon hitting you. Uh Timon, you charge back to get a better aim. Pew! Go ahead. Easy to hit. Uh, that should hit 23. So yep. Uh, 12 is your magic number for these. We got a 12 on this chest here. Uh so that would be max damage, 11. Okay. Uh Patricia, as you stumble back into the wall. Uh, you gather yourself, but you will be at a disadvantage initially. Just this Let's first go. attack. Try to club one of these bats. <laughs> at disadvantage, I had a natural one, so that's going to be fun, Frank. Uh, we, we all know what that means, and if this is your first time watching this, uh, Patricia did not miss. Patricia clearly hit herself odd or time and even. Roll any die, Patricia. That is an odd. Patricia gets herself. Uh, she will take half damage of whatever this roll is. Oh, boy. Um, I love disadvantage. That's going to be at half. It's going to be six points. There. <laughs> well, you're going to need some help later. Uh, we will start <laughs> off with Timon. Two swarms on you. Well, there's an at 20 and an 11. So 15, does the 15 get you? The 15 does not get me. Okay. Uh, good news, I do not roll uh, damage, damage modifier for the monsters because I am a kind and benevolent DM. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you still take seven hit points of damage as they bite you. Tiny bites. Tiny, tiny bites. Uh, Patricia, urged on by the smell of your own blood, uh, <laughs> the bats coalesce around you. Uh, with an 11 and a 9, so 15 is the best I can do. That both misses. There you go. Uh, round two. Uh, <laughs> curious as to whether or not you're going to turn into a vampire. Timon, you're up as the bats continue to swarm all over the place. Yeah, that's fucked up life. That's where I go first place, mate. Run into bats. <laughs> anyway, um, can I hide to try to get advantage on these guys? I know it's a fucking swarm. <laughs> There's, you can hide behind Patricia and use her as a shield if you want, but they are all <laughs> over your ass. Now you can you can try and run, run away, run away, brave Sir Robin. I will give you a chance on that. But as for hiding, no, nah, they know where you're at. <laughs> I don't think so I mean, they are bats. Um, so uh, I think I can fire twice. Yep. I'm crossbow expert. So I'm gonna try to just step out again and shoot twice. Just, sure. Um, oh, you're in the hallway now. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess, I guess I don't know if it matters, but try to get it out of the swarm. I'm thinking, so, you know. Sure. Thinking. Not that it really makes any sense at this point. Uh, 12 to hit. 12 hits. And then second one. That's a net 20. Nice. Funk, funk. Now, are you shooting at the same swarm the first time? Uh, yeah, I think so. I was assuming I... I'm trying to trying to make sure I don't hit her, but right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would be doing. Well, she she does have a bat on her head. You could probably pluck <laughs> one of those. <laughs> so first attack next to my bruise. Six, six points. Second attack, which is crit, is uh, six point twelve points in a second. So eighteen total. Now it looks like uh, the two swarms that you had have diminished in numbers substantially. Patricia, uh, fresh off that hit on yourself, what would you like to do? Um, you are, I'm gonna do you're not at disadvantage, yeah. That is an idea. This that's that's going to hit a natural 19. There you go. Uh, 8 plus 5, 13 damage on one of my swarms. Very nice. Uh, Timon, your swarm continues to batter around you screeching angrily that is a 14 plus 4 18 
Uh, Patricia, both of your swarms are still highly irritated. Yeah. Uh, that's a 13 total and a 9 total. Uh, clearly, uh, your actions of hurting yourself has put the fear of uh, Takesis in it. <laughs> a 1 and a 3, 4 more damage to Tymon, and it is your turn. Oh, we killed the goblins. We're tough shit. Oh, bats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking of Tommy Boy because I saw that again. <laughs> oh, my God. Bees. There's bees. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll go ahead. I'm going to take one shot at my swarm and see if that hopefully disperses them. Sure. Uh, 13 should hit it. That's 11 points. Nice. Patricia. I do have a second. Again. Oh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, second. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. I keep forgetting the oh, crossbow you. expert. Yeah, that second one will hit. Another six. So 11 again. Wow. Very good. Patricia. Clubbing again. Uh, ooh, nine plus seven. Yeah, 16 hits. Uh, nine plus five, 14 damage. Fair enough. Uh, both, uh, your swarm is also diminished, Patricia. Uh, and both swarms go back into the room. Oh, oh. The door. that was, that was a thing. You want to leave the door open or you want to shut it? I just said shut the door. Yeah, I think we shut the door. Are you sure you want to shut the door? I'm just, I'm, I'm making sure I hear oh, you. Okay. Right. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, Not positive, just asking. Uh, okay. Well, you guys, you guys are hardy adventurers. Three goblins and a couple of bats. <laughs> mm. I would say retirement's in your future. Uh, <laughs> as you stand, uh, time and you're kind of even with the stairs going up. Patricia, you're farther down the hallway, and you can see where it kind of goes into another room. You also notice that there is burn damage. This is an ornate coffered archway, uh, kind of like the ceiling. Very ornate, very nice, uh, but a lot of burn damage down here, and you can still smell it. No accelerant, just burn. Mm. This is, I'm sorry, this is in the hallway or in a... This is, past the hallway. this is halfway down the hallway okay. on the left. You're still at the stairs because you were backing out to get better shots. Patricia went the other way. So you guys are about uh, 25 feet apart. Patricia can kind of see the damage, cannot see inside the room yet. Mm -hmm. Or you can continue going. Someone set fire in here. Hmm. Well, I guess maybe I'll go into that room, the burned room, but I'm going to be sneaking and then looking around very, very cautiously. I'll take a stealth roll. Uh, that'd be 19. Oh, very nice. You're silent as death. Uh, the floorboards of this room are warped and twisted. Uh, a feeling of heat from the floor. Uh, can faintly be determined. It, it's kind of a warmth. It's not super hot, but it's warmth. Uh, and the entire area smells of something. Give me an insight check, both of you, please. Seven, eight. Uh, you can't place it. Uh, three large tables with cooking utensils are present and covered in cobwebs. A pair of cauldrons hang on a swing arm outside of the fireplace. Clearly this is a kitchen or some kind of food dispensary area. Uh, the area is littered with culinary devices, tables, uh, rusty and cobwebbed utensils hang on the wall. The fire pit is right there. Uh, and it goes out to uh, three stained glass windows which would be on the street side, but of course uh, they are covered in wood so you can't see out of them. The stained glass windows, two of them are in good shape. One of them has suffered damage on one of the panes. 
Uh, it is a very pretty window, clearly expensive. It will need repair. Mm. So there you go. There is also a cutlery block under a thick coating of webs on the middle table. Hmm. Smells like someone cooks as well as I do. Well, you said the floor, though, is what's warm, right? Mm -hmm. I guess I'll, that's kind of curious. I guess I'll do another investigation check. Sure, as you drop down there, uh, you feel between the floorboards, uh, warmth is coming up, like there's a cellar around here somewhere. Give me uh, an initiative roll, please. And Patricia, initiative roll at disadvantage. Wow. A lot of shit in this place. 15. Damn it. That's pretty good. Uh, 18 with God. A disadvantage. God damn it. <laughs> Did I have disadvantage or just him? Nope, just him. Uh, Patricia, even at disadvantage, you hear a slight scuffing noise. And as you look around where it is, because Timon is down on the floor trying to figure out where the heat is. You see some snake tail moving towards him. Uh, big, thick snake. One might say like giant constrictor size. Oh, boy. Boots. Talking boots and a belt, baby. Uh, the 18 will go first. So you're Timon? Up. All right. <clears throat> I did not lose my foot in the war for this. Hopefully the, someone the else is lucky. The war of the bats. <laughs> um, I will rage, and I will go up to the snake and <laughs> crush it into the ground. Now, when you rage, do you take your rabbit foot and... Uh... Yes, yeah, there this time. Nice. It's got to be an attack. All right, uh, so I'm a wild magic. <clears throat> oh, boy. Um, I get plus one to AC, and if anyone's within 10 feet of me, they also get plus one to AC. We got uh, like a disco going on around me. It's multicolored lights. Timon, you get plus one to the AC. And then I will attack. Uh, nine plus seven, 16 to hit. 12 again to hit this thing. Oh. Easy to hit. Not exactly easy to kill. Well, that's a good roll too. Um, 15 hit points. That is nice damage. Uh, Timon from the... Oh, company make that of... 17. I forgot to add the rage. 17? Uh, from the thumping of the foot, you are very familiar uh, that that is an indication of danger. As you look over, you see a large snake, uh, probably named Nagini, coming at you. Go ahead. Uh, can I hide anywhere nearby? I'm sorry, one more time. Can I hide anywhere nearby? Uh, you can <laughs> leap upright onto the butcher block table covered in webs. Well, I'm within melee, so you get the sneak attack. All right, all right. All right, I'll just go ahead and then just take two shots at it. Then. Sure. Uh, so 14 to hit on the first. Yep. Sneaky, sneaky, sneak. Ooh, yeah, that's that's 19. Five, four, six, and five. Damage. Yep, 19 points of damage. Nice. Second shot hits. <coughs> It'll be uh, 10 points of damage. Nice. Andrew, you had what, one fight in Gen Con? I think so. Yeah, you got three already. Yep. <laughs> Peace Make or famine. The last one. Uh, I'm, not, I'm with a rabbit getting attacked by bats as opposed to inside <laughs> a giant crab. Odd even. Nagini goes after Odd. Patricia, not happy with the amount of damage taken. Uh, that's my second nat 20 of the night. Uh, that's going to hit. I'm going to need a 16, a DC 16 grapple check on you, Patricia, and you're going to take some heat. Uh, that's uh, like a strength check, right? Yep. Cool. Get advantage on this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, 18 plus uh, four. You do not get wrapped up, but you do That's take good. nine hit points of fang damage. Is that bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing? It is piercing, so you will take half, uh, four. Round yeah. Down. Uh, new <laughs> round, new round, Patricia, fresh off your bite. 
Uh, you uh, guys all have puncture wounds at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's all in the day's work. <laughs> if you put your thumb in your mouth and blow real hard, you'll just spurt. <laughs> yeah, it'll look like a fountain. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. I'm one more attack. Oh, no. Eight plus. Oh, that's. Uh, so yeah. You said 12, right? 12. Yeah, it's a 15. Six plus five, 11. Legending on this thing. Would you guys stop killing all my monsters so early? No. Uh, the third room, man. Come on. <laughs> N- Nagini does not look good. Like, good. really bad. So, can you finish him off, Timon? We shall see. Or can you roll a one and hit Patricia? No. <laughs> finish which one off? The the muscular fur ball that's just <laughs> that's right. in the world right now? All right. He'll only take half for piercing damage. That first one does hit. So sneak attack, sneak attack. It's got two hit points. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, like 16 to it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Chop the head off. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Little hand crossbow just taking decap. I'm assuming she probably severed it most of the way. So. Probably. Now, you did not jump up on the table, correct? No, I just, I just stayed where I was. Fair enough. Uh, so you've got this web-covered table with a butcher block in the center of it, uh, and you have the dead giant constrictor snake if you feel like using animal handling to try and skin it uh, for a hot pair of pants for when you guys go uh, clubbing at the tavern. <laughs> well, I got the hat. You just want to wear the snake as a belt? Like, yeah, is? I'll try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Uh, animal handling check for me, please. To Pull out my hand baby. axe to do this. Uh, it's a 10. Uh, oh, well. Your inner culinary spirit takes over and you... <laughs> <laughs> you, but you, you got food. So. Yep. The snake doesn't eat the, the rabbit this time. Uh. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, it looks like uh, that's it. I mean, I'm definitely like on a high alert looking for any other giant snakes. I want to touch that, that block, but everything seems dangerous here. Why did they yeah. even give me this house? I'm thinking burning this place to the ground is not a good idea. It's probably a good idea I'm at some thinking point. about it. <coughs> We're Build one spider stadium. away. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <coughs> Build a stadium or a racetrack in place of it. How about we head back down the hallway a little bit more or continue down the hallway? Sure. Uh, you guys get back into the hallway. Uh, you come to a door, which would have been straight ahead, or the hallway goes to the right. I'll open the door and check in there. This is a large room. Um, large. Very large. Uh, 40 by 50. Uh, and you notice that the construction changes so when you left the main courtyard you got into this hallway and it was i don't know uh early gothic or something and when you open up this door it's an entirely different section so your thoughts on this place houses multiple businesses is confirmed by your examination just just structurally because it's just different uh, oh, good. I love this part. Uh, as you open the door, it, this is not a room. My apologies. This is the inner courtyard. Uh, it has an old ratty tree in it, a water feature. Uh, you enter the inner courtyard and discover the area is covered in broken stone with weeds cropping up in various locations. A water feature is present with a marble statue in the middle holding a large urn. Uh, where the water comes up and splashes into a circular pool. This water feature is still active. Uh, Hmm. A group group of six vagrant types sit in the center of the courtyard around a spit and are roasting what appears to be a dead cat over a fire. The group does not appear thrilled at your appearance and demand you leave their domicile immediately. Uh, there are three exits from this place, not including where you came from. Right inside to the right 
is a long hallway going towards the back of the structure. Directly across is another door leading into a different part. And to your left are two doors that you kind of remember not choosing to get in initially because they're double doors. So this is a courtyard. There's foliage. There's the water feature. Uh, there's six hobos hanging out and they want you gone. How do you want to handle them? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, this is my place. I have to deed. But True. You know what? Are you going to stay over here or are you going to adventure the whole place, people? Maybe I can make a deal. You stay here. We're good. Okay, so uh, give me a persuasion check or intimidation. Uh, we'll, we'll go intimidation. Oh, yeah, 20. They accept your proposal as long as you do not bother them or take their cat. Oh, of course not. We just uh, walk back, close the door. <laughs> you, you walk back out and close the door? Yeah. Maybe. Okay, we, You're we agree. Look, they look like homeless, basically, people. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, I'll go out with you as well. So you have retreated back into your hallway? Yeah, we, okay. we made an agreement. They'll stay there. Sure. Uh, so there is the hallway to the right, uh, and there's kind of a foyer right here uh, with an old uh, ragged couch. Uh, you aren't really sure, but I mean, it, it could be converted into use for a small shop or something. Uh, but the hallway goes 40 feet down and hangs a right. Shall we go? Stealthily look around the corner of that hallway, maybe? Stairs going up. I'm going to drink a potion while he's doing that. Stairs, Which one? <laughs> uh, just the normal one. Okay. Nine extra hit points back. So we have the, the stairs I just saw, and then the, the other way goes to. Uh, Correct. So the stairs you initially saw are further back down. You have gone into a small foyer area, peeked around a corner. There are stairs going up, and it, it looks like it goes up, small landing, and goes up some more. More stairs. The stairs okay. and and that is all the places you see you want to go back mm. why well, go back more fun forward we don't know it's there i guess we'll go up the uh <laughs> the spiraling stairs maybe. sure and just again very cautiously on edge uh so you notice you notice that the uh, staircase is quite eloquent uh very nicely carved could use some furniture polish. Uh, you see dirt squares along the wall. Clearly, there used to be some type of artwork hanging here. Uh, the floors are white plaster, dingy white. Uh, but, you know, not, not bad. I mean, you know, you, you could turn this into a mall or a galleria. It wouldn't take too much. Uh, as you get to the top of the <laughs> stairs, you are in a long hallway that goes left and right. A peak to the left shows two doors at the far end on opposite sides. A peak to the right shows an open area, three doors, and the hallway curves to the left. Your choice. I was going to say, just listen. I want to see if I hear anything. Sure. Give me a perception check. Uh, that's I'm the one with the big ears. That's 22. That's uh, for 19. And uh, let's see. I'm gonna say you probably hear something. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> That'll be fine. Oh, I hear that. Yeah, he is quite annoying some nights. Uh, no, you will not hear anything. Okay. Uh... I don't know. Double doors? Okay. Let's go to the double doors. Listen at the door. Maybe. To the left, the doors on either side? Oh, I thought it was a set of double doors. It was because there was the three doors and then there was two doors. Yeah. So if, if you, you look into the hallway, you look to the left, 
There's a door on the left and a door on the right at the end of the hall. If you look to the right, there's a door, an open spot on the left, two more doors, and the tunnel or the uh, passage goes to the left. Oh, okay, then yeah, the, the end with just the two doors. Okay. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So you go left, uh, it just abruptly stops. Give me an insight check. Both of us? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 10. Okay, yeah, uh, two doors. Uh, the upstairs, nice, nice wood. Uh, you know, clearly with all these doors around here, open it up, a lot of retail space, maybe some personal dwelling space, you aren't sure. On the left, put your ear to the door, nothing. On the right, put your ear to the door, nothing. I'm going to... As I'm still thinking about those bats. No, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> no idea. Uh, I guess uh, we'll just uh, open the one on the left again cautiously. Sure. Uh, this room is going to be a little bit dark. Uh, you know what? Before you do that, uh, give me a perception check. I read the wrong part. That's a fun one. There's some scratching on the other side of this door. Oh, as Ooh. I've opened it, I've looked around and seen. No, not yet. I, I, I'll, I'll rule that you haven't because your perception check was high enough earlier. You would have heard some kind of scuffling noise that led you here. So you, I, I'll rule that you haven't opened the door yet. But beyond the door on the left, you, you have heard some scuffling noises. Do you hear that? That sounds. Yeah. <clears throat> another another creature we need to take care of. Uh, all right. This is one giant extermination. So I will <laughs> stealthily. What, did you think it was going to be free? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect the thing in every room. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I guess I'll open the door stealthily as, as I can. Uh, you hear a panting noise followed by a growl in this dark room. Your dark vision picks up three beefy forms. What do you see? Uh, I just shut the door. <laughs> uh, D D12 against me. Let's see if you <laughs> shut it in time. <laughs> big dogs, big dogs chasing. Oh, God. Four. four. Oh, four is right. Oh. Reroll. Six. Eight. Yes. Uh, you slam the door, uh, Patricia. You hear something thud, and then you hear something scraping on the other side of the door. Uh, the good news is the door does open in, so they do not have opposable thumbs, so you're probably <laughs> going to be okay. Uh, as uh, Tymon turns around, he's a little bit concerned of what is beyond there. Uh, give me an insight check, Patricia, to see if you can gather what is beyond door number four. Ten. Probably a dog. <laughs> I saw three of them. <laughs> huh, Ty Ty Tymon did see three of them. Sound like some pets for later, but I don't want to deal with them now. <laughs> okay, well, there's the door behind you do it. I'll listen at the door. Uh, this one you are not going to hear anything. Okay. I'll open the door. Uh, this chamber is well decorated and sectioned off with hanging tapestries on a rail system. Curtains. Uh, the tapestries are pulled back, but it is clear that it can be moved to section off uh, this very large room, 20, 40, 60 feet long 30 feet wide, you are in the high right area. Uh, the tapestries are in good condition. A large fireplace is present with carved images of royalty on either side of the fire pit. Uh, the skeletal remains of three bodies hang on the large beam of the ceiling. One body appears to be an adult female or potentially a crossdresser, I'm not judging, uh, but it is in a dress. The other two are smaller, 
maybe time and size, so possibly children or demi-humans. Uh, the presence of children's clothes should be obvious is how it is listed in here. So this is a very opulent room, very big room. There is a door farther down and to the right, so closer towards the front of the inn. But she do have these three bodies. <clears throat> and they have been dead a long time. I don't like that. <clears throat> And it, it. And, it, and it is easy to bypass them. Can you hear me or him? Cannot hear him. Yeah, we can't. We can't hear you, Sam. Nope. I think he said to go touch the bodies. <laughs> Nothing. Call me now. Did the jack come loose? <laughs> if you if you go all the way down to the bottom and have the ribbon appear, you can check your audio properties in Zoom. Strange it changed halfway through. Sometimes I know that if I, I've got several uh, microphones here, if it randomly changes to a different one than I have muted, then I'm screwed. Well, while he figures it out, I'll uh, we'll go on through and check the other door. Sure. Uh, as you do that, uh, you come to another door. Uh, give me an. There you are. Yep. Needed the whole time. I don't know what the heck that was about. It happens. Uh, this, uh, you said listen to it? Yeah, I'll see if I hear anything on the other side. Yeah, I was going to check the bodies out. You wanted to check the bodies out? Okay, so uh, Patricia, you go past the bodies because you do not disrespect the dead like that asshole mm -hmm. Timon does. Uh, and you listen, so go ahead and give me a perception check. Oh, yeah, 20. Uh, you hear something moving about, uh, and then you catch a glance over at Tymon. <laughs> I was investigating. I didn't say I was going to just poke at him. Oh, okay. Uh, you can investigate. Uh, there are three dresses there. One is an adult female size. Again, no judgment. Uh, the other two are child or demi-human size. Uh, again, they've been there a while. Uh it's just bones. Uh, you can tell that it is a very tenuous attachment on the vertebrae uh, and the rope. Uh, did you want to touch one? Wait, one of them has a rope? All three of them are hanging. These oh, are hanging oh, victims. I thought they were hiding. Okay. Nope, these um, are hanging victims. I'm probably not going to touch them, no. Not, not at this point. I'm just going to leave hanging. Give, give me an investigation check. 14. There are no boxes, stools, or other items that these bodies would have been standing on. So our home, uh, your home, uh, definitely has a murder in it. Yeah, figured that. I mean, it's not the first dead body we found. <laughs> uh, giant snakes, and we got uh, a crime scene. This is great. Property yeah. value is going way up. This is Detroit. The crying jester is in yeah. Detroit. <laughs> it, was an amazing, you know, it was an amazing hotel 75 years ago. Yeah, it was beautiful. Just go up to the 13th floor. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Patricia, are, what are you doing now that you know there's something behind door number six here? Uh, well, come on. You ready to fight again? Sure. Let's, yeah, might as well. I'm expecting something else to jump out. During the day. Sure. Crack that door open. Much like the previous room, this chamber is well furnished with gold and silver accents throughout. 
Uh, the polished, albeit dusty, dark wood gives an air of superiority to this chamber. Multiple small statues and trinkets adorn the room, including several plush chairs and small tables. A large oak table sits in front of a bank of windows. Uh, you are on the second floor. There are several holes in the windows, and that is causing the noise of the curtains to bang across. Uh, there are uh, golden candlesticks lying around, expensive statues, paintings of really creepy old white dudes, probably senators, uh, and a small uh, double wooded kind of checkerboarded box right in the middle of the desk. Uh, there is a skeleton lying on the desk uh, with a dagger in its ribs. Uh, it, it's not on the desk, it's it's in the chair. It's a good place to keep your dagger. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, look at that box. Sure. Mm. Uh, bigger than a bread box. Uh, again, Teak wood inlay with some other, probably wormwood or something. Very nice box. Has a little brass eyelet latch on it. Latch, no lock on it. Okay. Um, nope, easy to open. Check it for traps <laughs> this point. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, is that just a straight dex check? I'll, I'll go investigation since you're looking around at it. Uh, 19. Uh, yeah. Doesn't appear so. It's got a simple latch on it. That's it. No traps I, whatsoever. With my wild magic, I get magic awareness. So I want to use that, see if I have a presence of any magic in 60 feet. Uh, yes, there is. In the rib cage of the corpse. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm on the wrong section again, yeah. Uh, the dagger in the ribs. Uh, you believe it's magical. Uh, inside the box, you do not determine that there's magic. Well, I mean, the box seems fine. I don't know that we should touch that dagger, though. I can identify the dagger. It's a dagger. <laughs> magical I dagger. Open the box. I'm sorry? I guess I'm going to open the box. Sure. Uh, as you open the box, you move the latch. Uh, Patricia, you're kind of, you know, Dr. Jones in this dagger. <laughs> uh, you flip the latch, open it up, and, and there are a lot of jewels in there. Just I, just yellows, greens, aquamarines, a lot, lot of different colors. Small gems, but there's a lot of them. And then you see this mist rise up <laughs> out of the box. In the form of four shadows. Ugh. Initiative again. Ugh. Don't worry, they only sap strength. Oh, oh good. Yeah. Finally a good roll. I still beat you. 25. Damn it. Um, 14 for me. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm not last this time. Uh, you hear... Uh, screw the dagger. There are four spectral images coming up out of the box with time and going Woo -hoo. <laughs> you said it was just the box what the hell <laughs> now keep in mind there is light filtering in from the bank of windows so these shadows are going to have a slightly tougher time hitting you but okay. so patricia you're up you guys are they right on me or are they a distance away? They have no, because you're examining the chair, the body okay. in the chair at so everybody is boom right there, 10 feet. And how far away is the the windows? Are the windows? Foot and a half. I slide open the windows, first of all, or the curtains, bring okay. in as much light as we can. Sure. And then I will attack one of them. Sure. Give me a dex check to make sure that your hand doesn't get caught in the curtain as you spin around. Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. It's like a 20. Okay, that works. All right. And attacking. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Natural one. Woo -hoo! 
It's odd coming to me. At least I'm doing Stop hitting that yourself. Good. Stop hitting yourself. And at least I rolled bad. I won't even have to kill her to do it. This is awesome. Um, so that's a uh, five again hitting me. Nice. Uh, the shadows split off two on two. Uh, I'll go after time in first. Ugh. Eight and an 11. Best I can do is a 15. Uh, on Patricia. Uh, five and a 16. So dirty 20 or a nine. 16 or the 20 will hit. Okay. Uh, here's where the pain begins. Oh, boy. Ooh, uh, box cars. 10 plus two, 12 necrotic. And you, my friend, are losing a single point of strength until you get a short rest in as you feel their arcane abilities. That ability or modifier one on the strength. Uh, the ability itself. Okay. Still. So if you have 13 and you're to 12, you don't suffer anything. That sucks. Uh, but that brings us to Timon. Hey, those gems are looking pretty nice. This room is pretty small, so I can't really like tumble away, can I? Uh, actually, this room is 30 by 50. Oh, oh. Well, I'm going to put as much distance as I can, and I'll shoot at the one, uh, one of the ones in front of her. <laughs> uh, natural one, you'll definitely hit her. <laughs> no. I'm just trying to get the sneak attack, sorry. So, well, actually, it's going to be two shots, so. Not a one, so but uh, pretty sure that's a hit. That's 21. 12, 12 again. For some reason, everything's AC 12 in this. <laughs> I, when did I write this thing? Uh, four. Uh, that would be 17 points on that guy. Advantage. It's my magic bow. Cross chains on a And then second shot on the same one. Uh, that's going to miss. That's a... Yeah, that's a 10. My apologies. How much did you do to the first one? 17 points. Gotcha. Uh, oh, it dissipates. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I tried shooting another one, but I still missed. Very good. Top of the order, Patricia. Stop hitting yourself and do something I wish real I could. <sighs> should I wait? Should I wait? No, let's not. I need to save it. Uh, 14 plus 6, 20 to hit. Tricks are for kids, man. For 20 hits on the one. He did say nine plus four is going to be 13 damage. Okay. To yourself or to an actual opponent? No, actually opponent, an actual right? opponent this time. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't know why I had to check. I'm it's, just saying. it's fair. It's a fair question. Uh, still two shadows on you, Patricia. So we'll start with you. Uh, 17 and a nat one. Uh, I don't get the nat 20. I don't get the nat one either, but 17, 17. will get you again. Yes. Uh, bring on the murder hobo dice. No. Four, one, five, plus two, seven damage. This time you lose another single point of strength. strength. Okay. Uh, and that brings us to Tymon. We'll take a shot uh, again. The one that's still one still in front of him. Well, there's one on you, okay, and two on him. Okay. Uh, I will, yeah, shoot one of the ones near him. Okay, one of them is kind of moving slower than the other. That's a nat twenty. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's so dead. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's 28 points. Puff of black smoke. Other shot. I will shoot the one in front of me. And that I'll hit. Uh, nine points of damage. Nicely done. Top of the order, Patricia, one of your opponents. I uh gonna take my last potion of healing. Much of oh gosh. 
Cool. Is that an action for you? Yep. That's it then. Uh, w- one and one. Patricia. 17 plus Jeez. four. Timon. 16 plus four. Dirty 20. Both of you are jumping on the pain train together. Uh, six plus two, eight damage. Each of you loses three strength points. Three. Uh, you better do some cool shit here, Timon. Because <laughs> you guys are growing weaker and weaker. You're dirt daring well, from the Dragon's Lair game. To tumble away from the one near me. And seeing how Patricia's probably not doing so well, I'll shoot that one again. Give me an acrobatics check real quick, too. Make sure it's not a one. It's not a one, it's a two. But that gets me an eight. (laughs) Eight for the acrobatics check. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, you don't... The Olympics are not in your future, but go ahead and take <laughs> your shot. <laughs> uh, so that's... Yeah, uh, 17 to the one in front of Patricia. <laughs> and then I will take my last shot at the one that was on me before. I'm the only one left. So that should hit. 10 points. Uh, Patricia, it seems as though you've been granted salvation from your associate who still has one shadowy figure on him. You can tell steam is rising off of it too, as that direct sunlight is really adversely affecting him. I will run up and give it one swift smack in the back of its corporeal head. With your minus five strength. That is a (laughs) 20. Oh, nice. Uh, five plus nine um, plus I'm at a plus one fourteen sixteen points of damage. Uh, uh, oh. I don't think I'm quite as bad as you, but I'm not doing too good either. Perception yeah. check. Yeah, there's another. I'm done. Thirteen. Eighteen. Uh, Patricia. Over there on the wall is one of those creepy paintings. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Somebody on the other side of the wall. Uh, there's also a door right next to that painting. Well, uh... I say we close the door we entered and I need, I need a break. Yeah, I think it breaks pretty good. You don't worry. I worry, though, that we won't get it, but I need it bad. <clears throat> so you want to go into the room with the swingers and barricade the door? Is that what I'm hearing? I think that's better, yeah. Well, uh, no, I, I'm just I'm clarifying. No, 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 I think that's... Yeah, I, I yeah. say that, if not, go back further. That'd be, I'm fine with either one, though. We can go back yeah, I think that big room's fine. Barricade the door and... Yeah, see if we can get a, a rest in sure no that works uh as you guys open the door and head into there you see a fleeting subject running for the door that got you into this room in the first place uh it appears to be diminutive uh demi human or child uh and it rounds the fireplace area just as you open the door and flees out the door great was this one of the people hanging, or is this just some other random? Nope, three swingers are still there. Uh, also, you notice there's a secret door in the corner. So the room that you were in fighting is like this. The room with the swingers is like this. So you surmise there's a closet or something okay. with a secret door. The watcher went through the secret door and ran like hell, moving past the swingers, uh, and has escaped. Of course, they're figures. 
Um, Maybe we use his room to rest. I suppose we could. Yeah, at least we'll there's nothing in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, please, please. <laughs> Carefully look into the closet, the secret closet. Sure. Uh, it, it is a very slender closet. Uh, there are some clothing on the floor. Uh, it looks like a makeshift bed of some kind. Kind of has a yeah. B.O. Uh, smell yeah, about it. Uh, you, you can tell in the dim light that's filtering in through the eyes that there's a little slider here so that you can look out into the room with the jewels that you've left behind. Uh, <laughs> And, and and there's the door that gets you in there and the secret door that you just came in. So it is an extremely defensible position. All right, that time. Let's do it. How long do you want? Uh, long enough to use my hit dice. Sure. D12 <laughs> for me. Uh, so you'll take an hour. Uh, nine. Or uh, you will be unmolested for that hour. You will recover your strength points as well. Yes. Uh, you may choose to use as many of your hit dice as you want uh, to do this to do your recovery. First. Okay. I'm probably going to end up using all of mine. Thanks, Frank. Um, I believe you were whining about not getting to hit anything last time. <laughs> yeah, the one time I finally pick it right and it's getting my butt whooped. All right. Way wrong spell to this. Oh, I get one more. Yes. Uh, sorry for the bats, boys. Your fourth <laughs> level, for God's sake. <laughs> All right. Okay, about an hour has gone by. Uh, I will say that time and... Uh, you remember that that box of jewels is still out there, along with a lot of other expensive shit. Uh, why it has not been picked by the vagrants or by this unseen individual that escaped, anybody's guess. Why the bats haven't come in and carried it off is also <laughs> a, a peculiar. Well, the greedy side of me wants to go take it. The intelligent side of me wants to just leave everything the fuck alone. It's like, we'll get there later. <laughs> it's still there, yeah. My I'm place. sure it'll still be there. I, I'm yeah. worried about the, the, the Scooby Doo villain behind the painting right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, find them. You, you can exit the room in the area that you fought or the area of the swingers. Yes, swingers? The three Back bodies. out the way we. Back out the way we came. Yeah, sure. Uh, you get into the main hallway across the room. The door to the dogs is still shut, so no one has oh, let the dogs out. Uh, uh, some scuffing in the dust indicates that your spy uh, clearly went this way and went down the hall, kind of in the direction that you got here by. Uh, so uh, the so try to see where he went. Let's follow him, yeah. Uh, who's the tracker? Well, I got, I, can you use investigation for that? I'm pretty good at that. I'll, I'll go survival I'm for that. I'm not submit survival. I got some survival. I'll try it. Sure. I can try it well. The worst that can happen. Well. <laughs> 14. Uh, it goes down the hall, past the stairs, into the area that you have not explored yet. Let's go. Down the hall. You walk past the ornate staircase. Uh, to your left is a, for lack of a better term, railing, uh, a wooden ornate railing that looks down into the cobblestone, cobblestone courtyard uh, where the vagrants <laughs> ha have enjoyed their cat. Uh, slow cooking the cat. For them. There is a door directly to your right there is another door a little bit farther on your right there is a third door at the end of the hallway on your right and then the hallway goes left the scuffing indicates third door I think we should go there 
Yeah, I'll go up to that door and check it for the traps. Anyone's got the answers here. <clears throat> as, as you get to that door, you can see down the hallway to the left, uh, and it is a hallway. Uh, directly at the end of that hallway is another door, and it goes back left, so it's kind mm -hmm. of making a square. Uh, but there are no doors along the sides. Uh, who's checking the door where the scuffing leads to? I'll check for traps. Investigation. That is a 23. Simple door. Uh, you do feel a draft coming from underneath it. Not warm, not cold, just Smear. a draft. I guess I'll listen at the door, too. Slight whistling. I was, I was saying, I guess I'll listen at the door. Oh. Slight whistling. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at Patricia. You ready? Five, ready five, as I'll ever be. Five or whatever. And slowly, <laughs> carefully open the door. <clears throat> you open the door and it's a short hallway. Uh, it's empty. No indication of artwork on the walls. Uh, another ornate railing is at the end of the 20-foot hallway. Uh, oh, I, I won't say a pleasant breeze because you're in the middle of a large urban environment, but it's fresh air. Uh, and beyond the railing is like a, a large cavernous opening, uh, but it has a rooftop. So that, does it look like it's structural damage or does it look like something actually natural? Or something uh, it looks like there's a drop because it's you've got the railing and just beyond the railing, it's just open. You can see the rafters on the ceiling, but you don't see anything on the other side of the railing. So it, it's open to the bottom. As you guys wander that way, uh, you can see... Uh, Warehouse, storage, something. It's just open. Uh, and then you can see cobblestones. It's an alleyway. So it's almost like a garage without doors and the alley. Uh, the scuffing indicates that whomever uh, escaped went over. And then you notice there is a ladder propped up to this area. So if you want to go down and outside, you can. If you lean over the railing, you see solid wall and then another railing right about the area of that first door. But the second door, solid. Hmm. He got an hour on us too. Who knows where he went? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could continue to try to find him. But... Let the record show uh, there is uh, no monsters in this area. So I don't hear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a monster for over an hour. Going yeah, on. no shit. Like, you know, it's like somebody moved in and invited all its friends. Hey, come <laughs> in here, giant snake inspector. We're playing uh, first edition rules where every goddamn room has a different monster with a bag of treasure hanging. <laughs> I can't wait to be teleported out front with all my games. <laughs> and as a different sex. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, come so on, follow him. Or, yeah, I don't know. I just I'm worried we lost him with the time, but I think we should go find him. The only thing we're going to find inside here are just more people. Yeah, or big snakes. So I guess we'll keep trying to see if we find any evidence <coughs> of him. Maybe sure. Uh, you'll you'll throw yourself over the rail, climb down the ladder. I'll take D twenties as long as it's not a one. You'll be fine. If it's a one, you will get down from there faster. Not a one. Eleven total or ten total. What was it, Timon? Oh, I mean, I rolled just an eight on the. Other. Okay, uh, so you guys make down the rickety ladder. Uh, this is kind of an open area. It's kind of a, more of an awning kind of thing. Uh, the the rooftop is wood uh, beams. Some shingles are missing. A couple holes. Some water damage. But now you're out in the alley in the back. Uh, there is a door. There are two doors out that away. Uh, there is a single door up to the top. This whole area is open out into the street. 
There's a door to your right. And if you turn around back, you can see a long hallway. <clears throat> see Scott's anywhere. Uh, give me another survival check. Probably not. That's a nine. I nope. Know that, uh, that breeze has covered the tracks. <sighs> oh, great. You're also getting a scent uh, from the single door high right. Kind of scent. Um, maybe poopy kind of smell. Does it match the scent that we smelled in the closet where we it took does, our rest? It does not. Okay. Uh, so uh, a shit door. I was going to say we never fought a shit monster, but first time for everything. <laughs> yeah. Single door with a smell, single door <laughs> to your right, two single doors to your left, probably leading out to the street, and the hallway behind you. Hallway? Mm -hmm. I guess it's going down the hallway. That's go down the hallway. So far. You go down the hallway, <clears throat> and it looks like a posting board, a posting totem uh, used to be here. Uh, there's a frame outline and soft uh, wood poplar, maybe. Uh, and you can tell from the holes that people used to post notices here. So it's kind of a public egress. Uh, as you go down further the hole, you hear a loud belch, and you are in that main courtyard again, uh, where the feline festivities occurred, and the six vagrants are like, what? You told us we could stay here. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Good See job, thanks. Through here? What? See a little guy come through here? What do you mean? What do you mean a little guy? I don't know, just a small I mean, little short. guy. Short. guy. I saw somebody. He ran off. No. <laughs> uh, you can do an insight check if you want. Yeah. I don't know if I believe him. 20. Dirty 20. 17. Yeah, he's probably lying. Huh. Where'd he go? Does anyone... Don't remember. <laughs> Toss him 15 gold pieces. Oh. Hell yeah, uh, he went that away. He's about yay tall. He's wearing a leather jerkin. Uh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, I saw that guy. He Perfect. went through that door. I believe him when he says that. Oh yeah, fifteen gold to a bunch of vagrants. <laughs> Hell yeah, this. that guy's not lying. <laughs> that guy. I'll tell you where his mother's at. Friend. I'll take your money too. You guys want to come with us and yeah. dude, us that, place is, that place is haunted. Huh. The whole yeah, place we, seems uh, to be. We ain't going in there. That place is haunted. All right, All right well, well, let's go. Your cat. Yep. So as, as you come in, again, there's that door. What, the first time you were in here, you came in from the right side, and there was a mm -hmm. door and the hallway. That door is still there. That hallway is where you just came from. And the door they're pointing to is over there. Go so to that door. the farthest end of the building. Uh, you go to that door, the six vagrants are looking around. <laughs> <laughs> they enjoyed their cat. It what, was what flavor was it? Tabby. Tabby. Flavor. Look at that ass right as you said. Yep. Tabby. Uh, but yeah, other than that, if you listen to the door, because you guys are jumping around, which is awesome, you will not hear anything. Checking it for traps again. Sure. <laughs> the vagrants are all watching you. Yeah, nice. They are curious. They don't get a lot of cool adventurer types around here. Oh, yeah, you know. Uh, oh, thanks for the compliment. Chubby dwarf with scrawny arms and legs. Uh, <laughs> well, they're eyeballing Patricia thinking. Yeah. Dinner. Yeah. Let's look at him. Let's go ahead and try. See, if you would have kept the constrictor snake, you could have fed them all uh, snake pate. Oh. Snake. Always thinking. Uh, what's your check on uh, traps? Uh, that was a uh, eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. 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 Roll. Then I guess open the door. Let's go. Uh, this room again, completely different uh, theme. Uh, much nicer. Really nice. Circular tables with chairs surrounding them fill this room. A bar adorns the north wall, and a large wrought iron chandelier 
is present hanging from the roof or the ceiling above. Uh, the ceiling is open to the second floor. So it hangs down from the, the second floor and a large fireplace sits on the south end and has knights holding swords carved into the limestone fittings. A loud ticking can be heard once you enter from the western wall that is coming from a rectangular box. It's just a box, it's not a clock. Okay, <laughs> um, well, we didn't do so well with boxes last time. Nah. I think we're going to stay away from that box. Yeah, and those swords. Are you going in? Yeah. yeah. As you go in, you notice that the ceiling's open. Great big wrought iron thing. <clears throat> Behind the bar is a short wall, and it has stairs going up. On the far side of the fireplace is an alcove with a single door that you couldn't see from the door that you came in on. And any scuff marks? Not a one. Oh too, much, too much time has elapsed, and every once in a while you'll see dust mm. fall from the ceiling. Well, which door? Or the box. Mm. Box is always curious, but yeah, I think we stay away from the box this time. Yeah, um, so you got the stairs, the door, the box. So, the door. Yeah, let's go check the door out. As you move across the open area, everybody give me a perception check. Uh-oh. 23. Oh, yeah. Not me. Uh, 10. Uh, somebody's moving around upstairs. Oh. oh. You, you get to the door okay. It is a single door. Uh, small shelves line either side of it. It's more of a kind of a pocket door looking thing, but... You lead somewhere. Uh, give me an insight check, both of you. Uh, that'd be a dirty point. Uh, 14. Uh, Patricia, you aren't quite sure. Uh, Timon. Timon, you surmise that you are probably in the middle of the far left section. So this door will probably lead to the front facing thing where you initially surveyed your holdings or Patricia's holdings as the case may be. So you surmise that this door will lead you to the very front of this establishment. Uh, both of you realize that this room is 50 feet across and 50 feet wide. So 50 and 50, huge freaking place. It's already got a bar. This could be a tavern. Yeah. So, you know, you separate it out, knock out a wall, put in a put in another door. Whatever's behind this door, man, you got another shop. I mean, this, this place has endless possibilities. But you got to go see how big it is. Well, didn't we hear movement upstairs? Yes, you did. Patricia did not. Okay. Well, I would have probably relayed that first. But, um, yeah. So, go upstairs. Yeah. Bunt. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. I need to get this guy out of here. Yeah. Well, right now you're at the single door, but the stairs are on the far side. Let's go. Okay. Ignoring the door, you cautiously make your way around the open thing. Uh, the wrought iron circle just kind of sways, so you're assuming there's a breeze uh, up there somewhere. Uh, as soon as you step up on that stairway, loud creak, just freaking <laughs> audible creak, because uh, th there's some water damage here. Looking up, there's a slight hole in the roof, so the stairs have suffered some water damage. So you've alerted anybody up top with that creak. Uh, as you get to the top, again, short wall uh you look around the corner uh and you are in a uh i, I want to say orchestra pit but that's not the right wording it's the balcony where musicians would play so there's like okay. five seats so you can surmise without an insight roll that 
this is where a band or performers would play, and that is why it is open. Uh, but as you look around, uh, there's a pulpit on the far corner, just above where that single door was down below. But there's really no way to get to that pulpit because there's no floor up here. So you are at a dead end. Mm. Hopefully not literally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look around and see if I can find another like, secret door. Sure. Uh, go ahead and give me an investigation check. 17? Nope. Everything's solid up here. You do find a small, like French horn, only smaller. It is brass. It is dusty. Uh, but it would lead credence to the fact that this is where minstrels or musicians or a bard would play. Uh, it seems tucked away in the corner behind some chairs, unbeknownst to anybody who's wandered up here before. You said there were noises up here? Mm -hmm. No? Nothing else really to look around for, huh? Yeah. See how there could have been noise up here. Would it, does it look like would it be to, is it possible to climb to that pulpit on the other side? It would be very dangerous. Okay. I mean, there's like molding <laughs> that you could kind of edge your way around. Uh, <coughs> your opinion would, tools, I don't know if that would help at all. Say again. Yeah, I've got burglars to the roof, but I don't know if that would help. No, it's the, the easiest way you would surmise is to go back downstairs, go through the single door, and assuming there's something up there. I guess go back to the other door then. Yeah, well, there's nothing up here. It's a dead end, and might there's as well go horn. back. And... Do you look at the horn? I'll pick up the horn. Do you sound the horn or look at it, or what are you doing with it? Mm, yes. It is blocked. Hmm. Interesting. As you spin it around, you find some paper stuffed into it with wax seals kind of hidden away. Hmm. There are Two. Oh, Just like there are two of you. Interesting. One for me, one for you. This seems like a great idea. Yeah. Which one do you want? That one. <laughs> <laughs> I just grab one. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> uh, they they are sealed on my end. Yep. yep. Uh, have. Andrew, have you ever dealt with the Volute Scrolls? No. Okay. <laughs> so they are sealed. Uh, once removed, you may sound the horn if you want. But these items appear to be old. I mean, old parchment, sealed. One for so, each of you. See if there's any magicness here with this. Is that something you can still do? Yeah, I can check for magic. Oh, yeah. Those babies are magical. What about the horn? I'm the horn is not. Okay. I will go ahead and identify one. Of them. <clears throat> it is a volute scroll. You are familiar with these uh, through the use of your magic in that these items are exceptionally chaotic. Uh, once the seal is broken, whatever is written on the document happens immediately. Uh, sometimes it is good. Sometimes it is bad. Most of the time, it is bizarre. <laughs> these I are mine open. The, <laughs> I do it. The, these are a huge hit at conventions. This is yours. Yes. Oh boy. 
Because I'm like, well, I guess I'll stash this way. I just see her. <laughs> you are allowed to call upon your deity to answer a single question with 90% certainty. Oh, that must be done <laughs> instantly. Uh, what would you like to ask your god? Is it a yes, no, or just anything? Uh, it is a short answer or okay. a yes, no. Which way did the man go? Wrong. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, a sound appears in your head as your deity's thunderous voice booms. You are in the wrong direction. This is the vagrant's urinal. <laughs> kind of smells like it. Yeah. That was uh, mostly water damage. <laughs> water. So, so. Yeah. Yellow water. And then All the right. voice disappears. All right. Well, we're in the and wrong this, place. This one has never been pulled uh, in play before. Hey, God, where'd that guy go? Well, okay. not up here. No. Okay. So I guess go to the other door. I'm just going to hold on to my scroll for a little bit. Okay. Uh, you go down the stairs, cross the opening. See the iron chandelier moving? Come to the single door. Open it up. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. Oh, boy. Uh, a brass plaque on this door to this room indicates that it is a gambling parlor. Opening the door, you notice that stuffed animal heads adorn the wall, including a large bison head just inside the door on your left between the abutments of the chimney. Uh, the sides of the fireplace are decorated in limestone, carved again in the shape of the knights holding upright swords, just like it was on the other side. A large, ornate, circular rug adorns the center of the room and has a geometric pattern on it. Center of the room also has what appears to be a billiard table covered in a sheet. The left corner of the room has a large silver harp adorned with carved satyrs. The opposite corner has a pair of plush velvet chairs with a small table in between them. Atop the table is a chess set made of gold and silver pieces. Several other small tables and chairs ring the chamber and have dice and or playing cards atop them. A thick layer of dust uh, does not disguise any of these items. Hmm. There does not appear to be any exit from this room. Uh, and the windows on the far wall have been boarded up from the outside. Any way to get to the pulpit or whatever from before that was what they were for you. investigation check uh, 16 you notice that there are a set of bookshelves here and that's what you thought they were but you notice that they are about a foot and a half apart indicating that there is a small set of staircase or a small stair built into the wall and as you look up, there's an overhang where the pulpit would be. Pulpit. To move. Stairs. I go up. D20. Both of us or whoever's climbing, as long as it's not a one. No. It's not. No one here. Uh, you guys both climb up. There is a small plateau. It's about five by five. Uh, and there is a door on the second level. Check it for traps. <laughs> uh, that's a 20, dirty 20. Yeah. Nope, no trap. I guess we'll listen because we've been doing that too, and I don't hear a trap. So, open it up. You feel the breeze, you open it up. It's the entrance to the small pulpit. You get a nice view. 
apparently you had music, you had oratory here, looking around, uh, nothing. There's no doors, there's no windows, just the orchestra place on the other side. Pretty much a dead end. Hmm. All right, well, go back down. Go back down, you're in the room uh, with the billiard table, the small chairs, the chess set, the silver heart. You said nothing had dust on it. No, it all has dust, but it's not so thick that you can't tell what it oh, is. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna look at that billiard table. Yeah, okay. that's the one with the sheet on it. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> Do you lift the sheet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the covered billiard table has a pair of cue sticks atop the rectangular piece of furniture. This item has actually been turned into a mimic and will attack when anyone yeah. comes near it. Initiative. Yeah. <laughs> oh. A mimic pool table. 25 again. Damn it. 19. So I'm in the middle again. Uh, you notice the legs start to tremble almost like yours do when you go into a rage <laughs> and you react first, Patricia. I will rage. So I get my D8. Or um, my magic or magic infuses one weapon of my choice. Um, it changes the force damage type and I can throw it if I want and it comes back. But since I'm right on him, I'm going to hit him anyway. <laughs> sure. Ooh, uh, 13 to hit. 12 again for some reason. Wow. I have no idea why I kept doing this to myself. Oh, that's a good roll. 10, uh, 15 force damage. Nice. And that is my turn. Uh, one of the pockets will spit pool balls <laughs> at odd even. Even, uh, so uh, Simon, you'll get the pool balls as the pseudopod picks up one of the pool cues and attempts to whack Patricia. <laughs> so Patricia, <laughs> uh, the pool cue swings over your head, I'm guessing, unless a 10 magically hits you. Oh, ears to flop down. Uh, 19, one of the pool balls connects with Timon uh, right in the noggin and you're going to have <laughs> nine hit points of damage and Ugh. a goose egg appears on your forehead. Uh, it's payback time, Timon. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. It can only do this 14 more times. Oh, cool. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I'm going to fire bolts uh, down that, I don't know if it's its mouth, I guess, wherever the cue balls came from. <laughs> 17 to hit. Yep. Hits. The sneak attack, because he's near it, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be 15 points. Second one. I'm not kidding. That is another natural 20. Jeez. I, I, I think I'm only one nat 20 behind you, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm uh, well behind I, all of you. I, I think I've got two or right. possibly three. Oh, buddy. Uh, 17 points. Six times two plus five. Nice. Uh, this pool table's seen better days. Patricia, uh, that damn pool key is going to hurt if it is. It's going to wind up and come straight across the top of it, right into the felt. That's a natural 20. Uh, Playing catch up I now. called it. Oh, and I just rolled double sixes on that two nice. six. So 24 plus five is 29. Plus I missed the plus two from a four. That's 31 points of damage. Uh, Patricia comes up and over, cracking through the slender slate plate, and the item caves in on itself. The remaining 14 balls all, <laughs> oh. all slide down. <laughs> two of them hop over the berm, and roll off in different directions. 
I was kind of hoping <laughs> the balls might be a little more next to the grow feet and start running away. Uh, minions. <laughs> Stuart, uh, you have successfully beaten up a billiard table, heroes. Baseball center pocket. <laughs> uh, the well, creature is sundered. Oh, uh, well. I guess I'll pop one of my potions while we're starting for that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, Patri- Patricia's got that weird potion. I know. I'm just waiting for the right time to try it. Not quite ready for it yet. Um, well, there's a, there was what else in here? There was a there's the chest set, the gold and silver chest set. There's the silver harp. There's the stuffed animal heads. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with those things. No. Uh, and uh, the playing cards and the dice. Oh, I'm proficient in playing cards. I gotta check that out. I'm gonna look at that chest set. Uh, the chest set is. Gold pieces and silver pieces. You're guessing in the realm of uh, maybe 200 gold, or I'm sorry, 300 gold pieces. Wow. Nope, that's the heart. 500 gold pieces. What? Wow. It's very expensive. Those bums would love this. Uh, Patricia, you pick up the cards and they are... They're very heavy. They're very sturdy. Uh, give me an arcana check. Yeah, this will go very well, I'm sure. Oh, actually, 18. Yeah, you know what these are. These are not playing cards that you grabbed. These are tarot cards. Hey, another game. Yeah, not quite. Roll, <laughs> me, roll me a d20. d20. A four. Sorry, I'm getting to it. Four? Yes. This card has a what appears to be a regal looking individual on it, possibly an emperor. Uh huh. It sits on a ram-adorned throne, and another ram is on its cloak. Uh, (laughs) No kidding. Uh, You feel the power well up within you. Uh, Have you ever seen the movie Big Trouble in Little China? Of course. You feel good. You feel powerful. Yeah. You feel feel awesome uh, holding this card. That's right. Uh, Do you want to pick up any of the other cards? No, I think I'll. I like this one. Okay, fair enough. Stick Uh, it in my hair. So, uh, Timon. uh, Yeah. I'm back uh, with a chessboard shaped bag on my back. That's right. I, it's a it's a bulletproof vest. <laughs> yeah, you see Back to the Future. Yeah. Uh, the only thing left in there is that silver heart and the animal heads. That's hmm. is that satyrs on the heart on the other animal heads. Yes, it does. Uh, can you cast identify with mage hand? I'm guessing no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so whatever the book says, the answer is going to be no. <laughs> All right, um, I guess, uh, I don't know, that harp's kind of interesting. I'm gonna go over there and look at that. Uh, it's a silver harp, uh, it's a little, little dusty. It's got satyrs adorning the handle. Uh, it, it's not the huge one, this is about a two foot one. Uh, it has five chords on it. Uh, the strings even look like they're like mithril or silver. Uh, it's not cat gut. This is an expensive item. Hmm. Do you uh, feel any magic in this room there? Uh, can't tell you. Already used that. Yep. I have no idea how often. All right. Okay, well... Um... I guess I'll just go ahead and identify the harp just to see if I can get anything off of it. Roll a D. 
Roll a d10 to see which string you actually activate. Uh oh. Oh boy. I didn't want to do that. What did I get? If I, I rolled a three. Not bad. Uh, this Not bad. At- atrocious sound, like the walls of Jericho uh, kind of noise, hits. I will need a wisdom DC 15. God. From everybody. Oh, geez. Made it. That's not one of my oh wow! I actually did too. Sixteen. Uh, as the reverberation goes, I, you you each cup your ears. I mean, it really, really hurts. Uh, I <laughs> I've heard bugle players worse. Yeah. You want to try and pluck a different string? I was identifying it. It's magic. Uh, it is a cursed <laughs> item. It is called the Harp of the Satyrs. Each chord does something different. And it's cursed. So, yeah, I think we shouldn't touch this anymore. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty powerful. Maybe we check out those animal heads or the stuff, stuffed heads. All right. Sounds good. Let's go do it. Uh, which one would you like? The largest one is a bison. Uh, then you have... <laughs> Uh, standard water buffalo, uh, oh, caribou, yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, you cannot tell if any of them are magical currently, but you feel good. You feel powerful. You know, oh, when you, you said stuffed, you meant taxidermy. Yes. I thought you meant cute little bears. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a gambling it's just, parlor. Just, you never like, know. Manly men. On spikes. Yeah. Uh, I like the bison. Sure. Uh, both of you investigate, Chuck. Uh, I am rolling great one. today. Investigation 19. 19 and? 20 total. Uh, something is glittering inside its mouth. No. Oh. But you got to reach in there. I got it. Yeah, you you feel great. Go for it. With my bunny paws. Uh, your gives you plus one on this roll. Give me a dex save. I actually get advantage on those too. Caught. 17 plus uh, three, 20 plus the one, so 21. You see Patricia reach in, and as she does, you see. <laughs> as the bison mouth snaps, but a big old red gem is in Patricia's hand. Ooh. There's a secret door right here. What? In the the bison? (laughs) Nope. The door you came in on, fireplace, blank wall. Hey, uh, secret door. Timo, Timo, secret door. Go over and investigate to see where yeah. the secret door is. It leads into the other room that you were just in because the fireplace sits in the center of that wall. Okay. So now you are in the room with the circular tables and the thing. Oh, geez. It's running around circles. But with that, uh, it's about 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah. And you guys really went through a lot of things. You never found the cellar. Should we get to all of them? Uh, well, I guess I should open that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, open the envelope. Is that, is that what you want to do when you find the secret door? Sure, why not? I'm going to drink my potion, too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just do all that stuff at the end. <laughs> Uh-oh. I see, a person. I see a person. Your primary weapon becomes oversized and hits for double damage. Oh. But you're, but you're too hit as it disadvantage with a critical miss being one or two for the combat sequence. So you've got the anime sword, essentially. Uh, but when you hit, you really hit. Uh, Patricia <laughs> downs the multicolored potion and... Yeah. The potion of Hendrix yeah, starts man. to kick in. She don't want to hurt nobody no more. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't take that before the minute. So. Yeah. She, she, she just wants to 
Like, hang out, man. <laughs> uh, I like that, this place. This one will last four hours. Oh, where, where she will she will <laughs> not want to do anything. So if the vagrants come in, it's all you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but with that, we will go ahead and end tonight's scenario. I told these guys before they would not see all of them. They tried their best. I will give them credit for that. Uh, first time we ran it, they got to like two rooms, I think. Uh, what what were... is this wheel made of? What does it look like? What, like... <laughs> you know what? The, the same group, when they went underwater, tried to use mending spells to fix the underwater submerged city. So oh. uh, that being said... Uh, Sam, what'd you think? Bad fun. For sure. Are, are you sure? Because there was a whole lot of bitching about every room that oh, has that something. Was just, <laughs> to be that wasn't meant to be bitching. That was just oh, no, I, happening here. I know. I I, we I, got out of the adventure in life. Oh, I, I just love doing that to you guys. Uh, Andrew, what'd you think? Third time picking a character. First time I actually picked the right one. That says a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah well you know it was only a matter of time folks we hope you enjoyed this rendition of the crying jester uh it, i don't know it, it'll be published next year sometime if you want it uh follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archives if you want to shoot shit about D, &D. join our discord if you want to buy our cool crap like the murder hobo con shirt uh links down there the koozies not for sale koozies are special that, that's that's the bonus to being in the in the circle of trust. Oh, uh, and special. if Sam plays one more game, eh, maybe he gets a special prize and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, don't forget if you want some custom made dice, uh, hit up at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, eh, they might make it, they might not. Might tell you to shove it. Hard to say. Uh, and if your game <laughs> stinks, unlike ours, try some Adventure Sense pirate ship uh and that's what it smells like uh it will liven up a game in person games are much better uh they also make the shine system to write gooder than me and of course their kickstarter how to rpg with your cat i think there's still two suits of cat armor left uh and those are cool those, those are cool pieces of things right there uh tomorrow no more goo campaign tuesday iron dm on between the rolls uh so we'll see what our panel can come up with uh courtesy of some random die rolls uh for all of us here at murder hobo inc uh thank you for joining us we will see you on tuesday dating game kiss and wave guys Mwah. bye everybody yeah.